Yeah. Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat yeah. and Quaker Puff Rice, yeah. the breakfast cereal shot from guns, yeah. Yeah. present the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On Husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Why be bored with breakfast, fellas and girls? Give yourself a treat. Pour out a heaping bowl full of taste-tempting Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Cover it with milk or cream and fruit and take a big spoonful. Ah, what tender crispness. What delicious nut-like flavor. Yes, there's a breakfast treat that brings you to the table on the double. Try it tomorrow morning. For tantalizing taste, you just can't beat delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Throughout the western United States, Maggie McGuire was known to mining communities only by the name of Nevada. As a prospector, she had followed the gold strikes from New Mexico to the Dakotas. But age caught up with her, and when gold was discovered in the Yukon, she joined in the great rush, but not as a prospector. Instead, she opened a little trading post on the Elkhorn Trail, a few miles from the village of Lodestone. She was arranging her stock on the shelves a few weeks after opening the store when a customer entered. Hello, Nevada, you old bobcat. Huh? <laughs> Glory be, Tombstone Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't you out working with a pick and shovel? You ought to be ashamed of yourself running the store, swindling poor miners out of their hard-earned money. I got too old for prospecting, Tombstone. If you had any sense, you'd know you're too old for it, too. You must be old of a hundred. Never mind how old I am. I'm never too old to hunt for gold. Found any? Heck, yes, I have. Oh, I don't believe it. You wouldn't know a hunk of gold if you saw it. If I showed you some rich ore samples, would you marry me? Marry you? <laughs> Why, you old desert rat, getting romantic at your age. <laughs> I mean it, Nevada. Always was crazy about you. Oh, go on with anyway, you. Anyway, never paid back the grub stake you loaned me 20 years ago back in Arizona. Recollect it? Of course I recollect it, Tombstone. Well, I'm here to pay it back, providing you marry me. Why, you're serious, aren't you, Tombstone? Never more serious in my life. Well, how about it? Well, uh, <laughs> kind of sudden. There's a constable in the town of Lodestone just beyond here. I reckon he can marry us. I know him. Constable Jim Barnes lives there with his wife. Then you'll marry me, Nevada? Yeah, Tombstone, might as well. Just wait till I get my parker and snow <laughs> Nevada and Tombstone were married that day. And the following morning, the old miner prepared to leave his bride. From his pocket, he took a piece of paper, which he tore in two pieces. Then he handed Nevada one of the pieces. I uh, want you to keep this, Nevada. What is it, Tombstone? It's half a map. When your piece is joined to my half, it shows where my mine is. You mean you haven't registered your claim? No, I haven't. If I registered that claim right now, it might start a rush up that way. I don't want that to happen just yet. Might want to stake out a couple more if this one's as good as I think it is. Yeah, I see your point, Tombstone. It would start a rush if we hired a claim now. As it is, this paper proves you and me are partners. Well, Nevada, honey, any delay might mean we lose it all. So I guess I better start for the mine. And I sure hate to leave you. Oh, I hate to see you go, Tombstone. I'll be back inside of a month. 
I'll have more than enough gold to take care of us for the rest of our lives. Well, I hope so. It's time both of us retired. Well, so long, honey. Good luck, Tombstone. <laughs> the old prospector kissed his bride tenderly and then started the long journey to his secret gold mine. About a month later, Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, arrived at the isolated village of Lodestone. They went directly to the home of Constable Jim Barnes and were greeted by Jim and his wife, Clara. Well, Sergeant Preston, come in, come in. Thanks, Jim. And you too, King. <laughs> King remembers us, Jim. Just look at him. You bet he does, Clara. How are you, King, you old rascal? King never forgets a friend, do you, fella? <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Preston, let me have your parka and I'll hang it up. Why, thanks, Clara, but I only stopped for a few minutes. I'm on my way to Caribou Falls. Oh, I won't have it. You must have lunch with us. Yeah, she's right, Sergeant. Won't take Clara long to get it ready. All right, I'll stay for lunch. Here, I'll take your parka. <laughs> All right, thanks. Clara, you hurry up with the food. Huh? It'll be ready in a few minutes. Oh, uh, did you see the new addition to our cabin, Sergeant? Yes, Jim. So as I came up, that's why King and I stopped. I'd like to see it. You'll find it rather small for a jail, but I guess it's all we'll need here. Folks around here are pretty law-abiding. Well, let's take a look at it while Clara gets the lunch ready. All right. Come on, King. You come with us. <laughs> it took but a few minutes to look over the one-room cell that had been constructed adjacent to the constable's comfortable cabin. Sergeant Preston and the constable returned to have lunch. Good job, Jim. It'll hold anyone long enough for me to wire you fellas in Dawson, all right? Yes, and it'll save you traveling to Dawson with dangerous criminals. You keep them here until one of us come for them. Oh, by the way, how is it you're in this vicinity, Sergeant? I had a report that Red Miller had been seen near Caribou Falls. I'm going to investigate it. Red Miller, huh? Yes, I sent you a circular on him some time ago. Yeah, here it is on my desk. Here, see? He's responsible for several trail murders. Waylays prospectors, shoots them, and robs them. I hope you get him. He's a tough customer. Right. Now, Jim, if you'll draw the chairs to the table, we'll eat. Well, it didn't take you long, Clara. And I worked up a tremendous appetite in the meantime. Good. You may wish you hadn't invited me to stay for lunch. Oh, oh, <laughs> there's all you can eat. Meanwhile, a few miles from the small village, Red Miller, a notorious trail bandit, and his two pals watched from the concealment of scrub timber as old Tombstone Smith and his team of huskies approached over the snow-covered trail. Keep to cover, both of you. What are you going to do, Red? Shoot him. Get a beat on him, Joe. All right. I'll get him on the first shot. Yeah, get set. Here he comes. Good shot, Joe. Now, you and Bud come with me. Red Miller, the trail bandit, had struck again. He and his two companions hurried to the sled and started to examine the load. Red Miller brought forth a heavy rawhide poke. Hey, look at this. It's plenty heavy. I'll open it up. Uh, sure. Holy smoke. Look at that. Must be thousands in dust. I'd sure like to know where this old timer found it. Uh, me too. I'd be willing to turn miner. Yeah, so would I. Well, let's search him. We might find out where he got the gold. All right, come on. Red Miller bent over Tombstone Smith's prostrate and bleeding body. In a pocket, he found two pieces of paper one of which he studied carefully. What's that, Red? Part of a map. A map? Must be a map of where his claim is. Yeah, but it doesn't mean anything. Why not? It's not all here. You've got to have the rest to learn anything. See for yourself. Yeah, it's no good as it is. Where's the other paper you found on him? Maybe that's the missing part. Yeah, here. Well, that's no map. It's a marriage license. Marriage license? <laughs> Who in thunder would marry this old coot? <laughs> Says her name's Maggie McGuire. They were married last month at Lodestone. Wonder who she is. Hey, wait a minute. What? Suppose this old critter gave his bride the other part of the map. Maybe he hasn't filed a claim yet. Yeah, if right. we can find her part of the map, we can find the gold. We wouldn't dare file a claim. They jail us in no time, Red. We don't have to file a claim. We could work it and get enough gold to make the three of us rich. No one would be the wiser. You're right, Red. How will we find his wife? Well, they were married by the constable, Jim Barnes, in Lodestone. I have an idea that if we go in the... The outlaws left the old prospector's still form in the snow and set out with his dogs and sled. In less than two hours, they reached the edge of Lodestone. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. You're taking a big risk, Red. That constable might recognize you. He won't know me. You never suspect Red Miller would walk right into his office to ask questions. And I hope you're right, but I'm not betting on it. Now, Bud. Yeah? You stay with the team. Right. 
Joe, you come with me. I don't want that constable to see me. He might know me. You don't have to go in. You stay outside his house. And why should I go with you? In case he recognizes me. If I'm not out of his cabin in ten minutes, you come and get Bud. The two of you can figure a way to get me free. Now, let's go. Constable Jim Barnes was busy at his desk when Red Miller knocked at the door. Oh, would you answer the door, please, Clara? Oh, surely, Jim. You just go ahead with your work. Good day, sir. Howdy, ma'am. Won't you come in? Oh, thanks, ma'am. I'm uh, trying to find someone. Maybe you can tell me. Who are you looking for? A woman named Maggie McGuire, but her name's Smith now. Oh, yes, I know her. She married Tombstone Smith about a month ago. Yeah, yeah, so I heard. Uh, where can I find her? She lives a few miles south of here. She runs a trading post. It's called Nevada's As Clara trading Barnes post. gave directions to Nevada's trading post, Jim Barnes studied the face of the visitor for a moment, then quickly got up from his desk and walked to the door. You can find her place easily. Everyone knows it. Oh, I see. Oh, thanks for the information. I'll be going. Hold on now. Get your hands up. Hey. Jim, a gun. Don't make a move, Miller. Take his gun, Clara. Oh, oh. <laughs> you made a mistake, Constable. Oh, I haven't. You're Red Miller. There's a handbill about you on my desk. I have his gun, Jim. Good. Now, come on in here, Miller. We'll see if you have any more weapons. Oh, she got my gun. I'll find out if you have any others. I'll keep him covered, Jim, while you search him. All right, Clara. Constable Jim Barnes quickly emptied Miller's pockets, then took him to the newly constructed prison cell. When he returned, he found Clara examining the map and marriage license. Find anything of interest, Clara? Yes, I did, Jim. I wonder what he was doing with these. What? A map? And... Hey, that's a marriage license I signed. Yes. The one you issued to Tombstone Smith and Nevada. What would he be doing with it? That's what I'd like to know. He asked where to find Nevada, only he called her Maggie McGuire. Yes, I heard him. Why don't you ask him about it, Jim? Uh, he wouldn't tell me. But I think I know how to find out. How? I'll go to see Nevada. I'll take the license and the map with me. She might be able to tell me how Red Miller got them. Oh, yes, Jim, of course. I'll get your parka. If you hurry, you can get back by supper time. I wish that Sergeant Preston hadn't left so soon. It would have saved him a trip to Caribou Falls. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. <laughs> You may not believe this, fellas and girls, but I was in an old antique shop the other morning and my coat sleeve brushed against an old rusty lamp. Imagine my amazement when... I am at your command. Why, could that old lamp... Yes, it is Aladdin's lamp. And, and you are the famous genie? Unless I am indeed. But why so sad? Oh, uh, I make wishes come true for everyone but myself. Well, maybe I can help you. Come along with me and I'll fix you a heaping bowl of the swellest tasting breakfast cereal anyone could wish for. Uh, wonderful. We'll top it with lots of milk or cream and fruit and go to it. Uh, you are most kind and generous. But what do you wish for? I am at your command. Well, I wish every single boy and girl listening in would taste Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice and see for themselves how downright delicious they are. Well, that is easy to do. Sure, your first luscious spoonful tells you that here's a real eating treat. You know, those choice king-size kernels are actually shot from guns. So that is why they are so big. Yes, they're exploded up to eight times normal size, so they're bigger and better tasting. And they're shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. One could not wish for more delectable eating, even for Aladdin's genie. And when it comes to nourishment, fellas and girls, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Yes, there's everything good you could wish for in a breakfast treat when you sit down to a heaping bowlful of Quaker Pop Rice or Quaker Pop Wheat. Shot from guns. Yeah. 
Now to continue. When Sergeant Preston left Lodestone, he cut across country instead of following the trail north. And it was nearly an hour before he came to it again. He observed the trail of a dog sled and noticed that it was accompanied by tracks of three men. He followed this back trail for some time. Suddenly, King stopped. Oh, oh, oh. Matter, King. Getting his rifle, the Mountie followed cautiously behind the big dog. Presently, Sergeant Preston saw ahead of them the body of a man, and he and King rushed forward. Quiet, fellow. Let me examine him. He's been shot, but he's alive. I got some spirits in my pack that may help revive him. Quickly, Sergeant Preston administered spirits and then wiped the blood from the man's face. Great Scott, Tombstone Smith. No, don't kill me. Easy, don't. Tombstone. I'll not hurt you. Easy, man. Take my gold, but don't kill me. I'm Sergeant Preston, Tombstone, your friend. Preston? Sergeant Preston? That's right. You know me, Tombstone. Yes, I thought you Don't try to talk now. Just rest. King and I'll take you to a doctor. Meanwhile, in Lodestone, Joe Davis, who from a distance had seen the constable arrest Red Miller, hurried back to where Bud Scott was waiting with the dogs. When he told what happened, Bud showed no inclination to try freeing Miller. I warned that he might be uh, recognized, but he wouldn't listen. I know. I was afraid of it, too. Now the constable's got him locked up, and we've got to get him out. Uh, not me. If we showed up at the constable's cabin, he'd have the drop on us before we got through the door. Why, Joe, he may have seen you. I don't think he did. I was waiting across the road. Just the same, I'm not going to risk my neck. We'd be fools to do it, but for another reason. What's that? We've got the gold and we've got the dogs. All you and me have to do is hightail it out of here. We can get along without Red Miller. That's what you think. Listen, bud, Red knows he's caught. There's nothing he can do about it. But if we don't try to get him free, he'll talk and he'll talk plenty. He'll tell the constable about us, and the constable will be on our trail before sundown. We wouldn't have a chance. Hey, Joe, look. Where? Toward the south trail out of town. Isn't that a constable? Yeah, it is. He's the one who arrested Red. Where in thunder is he headed? I don't know, but wherever he's going, he's traveling fast. Yeah. No sooner does he lock Red up than he heads out of town in a hurry. That gives us a chance, bud. Well, how do you mean? It means no one's in the constable cabin but his wife. I saw her when she was talking to Red. Yeah? We can wait till he's out of sight. Then we go in and grab her and get the keys to the lockup. Then we get Red out of the coop and the three of us can skip town. We'll have a big start on anybody that tries to trail us. That's a good idea, except for one thing. What's that? This may be a trick. The constable may suspect someone was with Red, and he's making out like he's leaving the coast clear for them to try and help him. I didn't think of that. What if it isn't a trick? There's only one way to find out. You stay here with the dogs. I'll follow him for a spell and see if he's bluffing. If he is, I'll come back and we'll skip for cover. And if he isn't, we'll go get red like you said. Get going. I'll stay with the dogs. Better get off this trail and hide in cover nearby. If someone comes along and sees you, they might get suspicious. I'll hole up in the clump of timber you see yonder in the gulch. Yeah, that's good enough. Marsh, you husband! Come on, Marsh! When Sergeant Preston and King reached Lodestone, they took Tombstone Smith to the constable's cabin. With the help of Clara Barnes, the old prospector was made comfortable. And then Sergeant Preston learned two things. One, that there was no doctor in town. The nearest doctor is in Caribou Falls. Well, perhaps he won't need one, Clara. His wound's superficial. It grazed his skull, but I'm sure there's no fracture. He's regained consciousness and talks rationally. Sleep and rest will bring him around. He was ambushed. There were three well, men. One must have been Red Miller. That's why Miller had the marriage license. Well, I don't understand, Clara. What are you talking about? I didn't have a chance to tell you, Sergeant. We have Red Miller in jail here. Oh? Huh? How'd you get him? Jim arrested him when he came here after... Clara Barnes to told her story to an amazed Sergeant Preston. And when she finished, he said... So Jim's going to see Nevada, eh? Yes. He'll be back in time for supper. I hope he will. What do you mean, Sergeant? I don't want to worry you, Clara, but two men were traveling with Miller. They must know what happened. If they do, they may have seen Jim leave town. They might grab him, hold him prisoner until I get free read. What should we do, Sergeant? If Jim hasn't been captured, King can overtake him and bring him back. I'll write a note and fasten it to King's collar. All right, I'll get some paper. Oh, thanks. King, King, old boy, you've got to find Jim Barnes. <laughs> when the warning note had been written and fastened to King's collar, Sergeant Preston and Clara took him outside. And there, the Mountie pointed to the tracks Constable Barnes had made in the snow. There are his tracks, King, right here. Follow them and bring Jim back. Go, 
find him, King. Find Jim. There he goes. Oh, I hope he gets to Jim before anything happens to him. All depends on King now. Well, Clara, let's go back inside. I want to talk to Red Miller. Meanwhile, the great dog King followed the trail of Constable Jim Barnes as it led southward through the village of Lodestone. He had not reached the outer edge of town when he was forced to give way to a dog team driven by two men. He stepped aside and waited for them to pass so he could pick up the constable's trail again. Hush, you husky. Come on there. Get him on, fight. Then the crisp air brought King a warning. He caught the scent of both dogs and men, and he recognized them. They were the same scents he had detected when he and Sergeant Preston found their wounded friend, Tombstone Smith. He knew that the man now confined in the new jail cell had been there too. It was confusing, but his instinct warned him that these two men passing him had had something to do with it all. But the moment he forgot the command Preston had given him, the command to find Jim Barnes, he turned and followed the two men and dog team. Joe Davis and Bud Scott had almost reached the center of the village when Bud said... Joe, what is it, Bud? See that dog following us? What about him? He's the one we passed at the edge of town. Now he's trailing us and he's bristled up like a porcupine. Yeah, he sure is. I'll get rid of him. Go on, get! Look out, Joe. He's mean. I'll put a bullet through him if he jumps me. No, don't. A shot would cause trouble. Leave him alone as long as he don't charge us. All right. Now there's the constable's cabin. We'll stop here. Ho, ho, ho! John, that big mud is still with us. He's up to something. Now don't pay any attention to him. We go inside, but don't knock on the door when we do. We just walk in and grab the girl before she knows what's happening. Right, let's go. Inside the cabin, Sergeant Preston and Clara Barnes stood in the hallway that ended the iron-barred door of the prison cell. Red Miller faced them through the bars, an air of insolent defiance on his face. I'm not talking, Preston. You get nothing out of me. Suit yourself, Miller. I have all the evidence I need to hang you anyway. And Sergeant Preston and my husband will find your friends. They'll be in there with you before night. Just a minute, Clara. What's the matter, Sergeant? Hear that dog barking? Yes, I hear it. That's King. Oh. Going to find out why he didn't follow orders. I'll go with you. Get him up, Bonnie. Don't reach for that guy. Oh. Easy, Clara. They mean business. You bet we do. All right, lady, where are the keys to the cell? I won't tell you. Joe, search the place for the cell keys. I'll keep the Monty covered. He'll be around here somewhere. When you find it, we'll let Red out. The Monty and the lady will take his place in the cell. <laughs> Meanwhile, a group of men clustered about the hot stove in the office of the mining company, a short distance from the cabin of Constable Barnes. As one of them opened the door to leave... King bounded inside, barking. Uh, Husky, get out of here. Yeah, throw the dog out. Uh, you throw him out. I don't want to tangle with him. Hey, hey, what's the matter, fella? Uh, that dog's acting mighty strange, like he's trying to tell us something. You know, I think I've seen this big Husky before. Uh, gully, you're right. You have seen him before. We all have. Yeah, Say, I see. I know whose dog he is. Whose? Well, that's King, Sergeant Preston. <laughs> Joe Davis soon found the key, and at Bud Scott's order, had gone to the cell block and released Red Miller. As the two returned to the living room of the cabin, Miller said, All right, boys, I'll take over now. We're going to lock the two of them in the cell, Red. No, you won't. It'll only be a matter of time until someone lets them out. Then the Mountie will be on our trail. What are you going to do? Finish them off. Spread kerosene through this cabin and set fire to it. Then we'll head out on the trail to get the constable and that map. Don't try it, Miller. You won't get away with it. <laughs> Yes, I will, Mounty. Now, Bud, keep him covered while I get his gun. Go ahead, but be careful. Joe, lock the door so no one comes in and surprises us. Sure, Red. Now, Mounty, don't make a move for that gun or Bud will drop you in your tracks. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter, Joe? A crowd of men are coming this way. That big hussy that followed us is leading them. An expected announcement caused Bud Scott to drop his guard for a moment, but Sergeant Preston took advantage of it. His right hand flashed to his gun belt as Red Miller made a dive to stop him. Look out, Buddy's going for his gun. Shoot him, Bud. Oh, my arm. Bud Scott's wounded arm put him out of the fight, but Red Miller grabbed Preston's gun arm in a frantic effort to get the Mountie's gun. With a violent effort, Preston wrenched himself free. Miller staggered back and fell against Joe Davis. 
Davis fell to the floor and the bullet from his gun went wild. And I'll get you yet. Come ahead, Miller. As Joe Davis struggled to a sitting position, Red Miller lunged at Preston. His frenzied charge was stopped suddenly. And here's another. Stand aside, Red. Give me a chance to shoot him. Joe Davis danced from one side of the room to the other, trying to get a clear shot at the Mountie. But the fight moved too fast. Suddenly the door of the cabin opened and the great dog King charged into the room to attack Joe Davis. And close behind King came the men of the village. Hey, get this dog off. Get him off. I give up. Don't shoot. I quit. Lay off of me. Dumb King. Dumb boy. All right, fella. King came and got us, Sergeant. He led us here. We knew by the way he acted something was wrong. And he was right. All right, two, three. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. That night, Constable Jim Barnes returned to his cabin, and he had Nevada with him. Both were amazed at the story they heard from Clara and Sergeant Preston. But Nevada was overjoyed to know that Tombstone Smith was alive and greatly improved. His bags of gold were in his lap. Tombstone, I almost lost you in the mine, too. Explain what those crooks were up to. Well, how do you figure, Nevada? They found half of the map on you, and they knew if they could find me, they'd find the other half. And by putting the two together, they could locate your mine. Uh, those no good crooks. I wouldn't have minded losing a mine, but I sure hate to lose a husband. <laughs> Took me a lifetime to get one. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it hadn't been for Sergeant Preston King... I reckon by now you'd be writing an epitaph for old Tombstone. Oh, oh Tombstone, don't Well, don't King, old fellow, we've had a big day. Now we'll report to headquarters that the case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. On you huskies! Yes, think of traveling for hours and hours, as Sergeant Preston does, behind a team of huskies, through the great northwest, through blinding blizzards and storms. Believe me, you'd want to start out with a nourishing He-Man breakfast. The kind that includes a heaping bowlful of nutritious, crisp, Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice topped with milk or cream and fruit. Remember, in these famous cereals shot from guns, you get extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Ask for Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice in the big red and blue Quaker packages. Never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the $10,000 rewards. There were two $10,000 rewards, but they weren't offered for the capture of a criminal. They were offered by a murderer for my death and for King's. The time came when he decided to save his money and earn the rewards himself. And at that moment, King and I were looking down the barrels of his guns... Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long.
This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.